Sally here and today I am going to be working on a storage solution for my Distress Oxide ink. I got obsessed with those and just had to have every single color but right now they're just in a box and so when I want to use one I gotta dig them out and look at the stack and it's such a pain. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos of ink storage and the one I found that I like the best used cereal boxes and made basically like little boxes and then glued them all together. So um, I've already made half of it. So here's what it will look like. And then I'll just um, use chipboard. There's chipboard in between like mm, almost every other layer. There's one, two, three, four pieces of chipboard in between, heavy chipboard. And so I'm going to do the sides. Hopefully that will make it so it's not so ski wampus looking. Um, so I'll do chipboard on the sides and then one on the back. And then I'll do glue my second section to the back. And that will give me 60 um, ink storage spaces. So let me show you how I'm working on it. Um, so you just take your cereal box and you cut it down. So I will do that and be right back. So I just have opened it up and then I'm going to cut the sides and the top and bottoms off. And then I'll have just these bigger pieces to work with. Okay, so now I have my two pieces and I need to cut them two and a half by eight inches. So if this way is eight inches, that would be swell, but it's just a little bit too short. So I'll have to, I won't be able to get as many. So I suppose if you had a bigger cereal box, that would work better. So I'm just going to clean up the sides. Now I'm just using my regular um, Fiskars trimmer. I have dedicated a special blade to cut um, cardboard and chipboard and stuff. So I just swap out my blade when I'm cutting things like that. So I'm just going to clean up that edge. Clean up this edge. Hopefully that little stain won't matter in the end. Okay, so I go clean up this edge too. So we need it to be eight inches. Yeah, that's so close to being eight inches that way. All right, so we'll just cut this at eight inches. And for things like this, if it's, or thin paper too, if you come up from the bottom, sometimes it will get stuck and wrinkle things. If you do it in the middle and like set your blade down in and then go down and up, it works a lot easier. So now I just will cut these into two and a half inch strips. still work. Might be a little bit narrow, but I think it'll still work. So when you cut your box down, make sure you're cutting like as far onto the side as possible just because of things like this. Okay, so for one cereal box I got six pieces of cardboard. But I really like this one because this way I am reusing things that normally would just get thrown away. So I liked, that's what I liked about, one of the things I liked about this project, the way she did it. So once you get your cereal boxes cut to where you, the eight by two and a half strips, do the scoring board. And then you score each one at 
three and an eighth. Sorry, she was using centimeters, and so I I was trying to find where I showed what the inches were. So three and an eighth, four inches, and seven and an eighth. So you just do that to all your strips, and then I'll show you what to do after. Okay, once all your strips are scored, you're just going to fold um, with the printing on the outside. And just, you know, make sure that they're lined up good. And you can definitely use a bowl folder to help with that. Oh, I might do that. I might do that. So. So make sure they have a good score. Okay, then you'll line up this, uh, fold down the one with the flap, and then your first score line, so that these ends meet like this. And then you just use scotch tape to. Um, Take that together. Oh, dog hair. There we go. And just hold that together. And just tape. And I just have been folding the ends over to kind of help reinforce that. Then you have just this little box. And then you make six of these little boxes, and then we'll glue them together. All right, so I've got my six little boxes, and I am just going to glue them together. I am using the Scotch Techie glue. Woo! Whoa! That's really coming out, so I'll just use my finger to... Spread that around. Just put the extra on the next box. And then just line it up the best you can. Keeping the boxes as square as you can as you do it. And then just clip them together, hold them in place while they dry. So once you have your six put together like this, then we're going to glue them onto um, a strip of chipboard. And they need to be nine and a half long by two and a half. So I'll just hurry up and trim this. Now this trimmer does work for the chipboard. So I think this is already nine and a half. So I'll show you how to do it. So you get it where you want it. And then if you set your blade and just go back and forth a few times, it won't cut all the way through, but if you like bend it so you can see where the cut is and flip it over, and I can just get through that last bit like so. Okay, so now I'm going to glue these onto the chipboard.
Okay, so that is one section. So you need, so I did one, two, and then I did one more because she just had 30 inks and I have 60. So I doubled the height of what she did. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten rows. So between every two, I didn't do it this way because I stuck two together, but um, there's a there's a chipboard in between almost every two. But um, so that you just keep building up with sections of six like this. And so I'm going to flip this one over and I'll glue my next pieces on top like this. So I'll put another six together and then glue them on top of that chipboard and then put another piece of chipboard and keep building until I have 30 of these little boxes. So I'm going to keep working on that and be back. I have both of my sections completed now. And on this one, I have added the chipboard on the side so you can see it squared it up quite nicely. And so I am going to do the sides on this one now. I wanted to do one longer piece with the sides together, but I need a piece in between. And I couldn't think how to do that very well. So I'm doing the sides separately the piece on the back, and then I'm going to do a long piece um, with the two together uh, for the top and the bottom. So that will help give it more stability. So I just measured the height of this and it is nine and a half inches tall. And of course it is uh, two and a half inches wide. So I got some chipboard strips here. Nine and a half by two and a half. So that one should fit right there. Well, looks like it's a little bit, just a wee bit too tall. So. Switch to Elmer's glue because my Scotch um, quick dryer, what's it called now? Tacky glue is kind of running out, so just using Elmer's and it seems to be working just fine. Okay, I'm just going to let that dry and, and do the other side in the same way, and then I'll come back when I'm ready to glue the back. I now have the sides on both of my units, I guess you could call them, and so now I am going to um, glue the back onto one of these. And I want to find the one that's the most flat. Some of these are poking out. Well, they both feel about the same. So I just want to make sure that it's on there. You know, good. And so I think I'll just put the glue on these. Now, just put this on. Okay, so I've got some paper pads to put on top of here to 
kind of hold it down while it dries. Maybe that'll be heavy enough. Oh, I think it will be. So I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and be back. My back is sticking pretty good. So now I want to glue them together, but oh, I don't know what I've done, but one is much shorter than the other. So they really don't meet very well in the middle. So I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll just make one even and glue a piece of chipboard across so that they're like that and then and then deal with the other side. I don't think I'll glue the back. I was going to glue this like this, but I don't know if that will work very well because man, that is really different. Shoot! How did that happen? understand but um, so let's see how big of a piece of chipboard we need just put this in the corner of my mat it's going to be a little bit wider than nine and a half because of the chipboard on the sides so it's just a smidge bigger then nine and a half. So maybe I could just do it at nine and a half and it would be okay. And then it is just over oh, like five and an eighth. So I could probably just do nine and a half by five and it would be all right. I'll do that. So I'll need two pieces that are nine and a half by five. One for the top, one for the bottom. I hope this works. What I'll do is just put the glue all over the chipboard and then set the uh, set it on top. I think that would work. I'm not quite sure what to do about this side because it is not even as you can see but I think I'll just get this dried and then worry about that other side after so it'll be wobbly so I think I'll make this be the bottom I figured out that if I just kind of lift this corner up a little bit, then it will be pretty much straight. So I think that's what I'll do. It leaves a little bit of a gap down here at the bottom. But I was going to cover the whole thing with some vinyl or something to make it look nicer. So I think oops you can't see I think that this little gap down here in the end won't matter I think I'd rather have it flat on both ends rather than wobbly so I think that will work so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this other on I believe 
believe that will be good enough. Maybe if I hold this like this for a little while, it will adhere better. So when this is all dry and I'm ready to make it look not so uh, homemade, shall we say, I will come back. Now that my storage bin is all put together into one piece, I was just going to cover it with um, some vinyl or something, uh, but these sides I think will look weird. So what I decided to do is just cut another piece of chipboard to put over it because it's quite uneven and has that weird gap and I thought that might help make it look more or I should say less homemade. So I just laid my piece right on top of this chipboard and marked the edges. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this chipboard to leave match. See if this is gonna work. Oh, now that one seems to fit pretty good. Maybe what I'll do is clip on that one so I know which way it goes. Let's see if I can get this one to... If I can figure out how this one... Oh, yeah, there we go. I think that is it. Guess I might as well just glue that right down. Right now. Okay, so I will let that dry. And I picked up some of this cheap spray paint from Walmart because I thought it would look better because uh, I've got all different shades of cardboard inside there. So I thought it would look better if I spray painted the inside. I don't know how it's going to go. And then I wanted to cover the outside. I have some pretty decorative vinyl. So I will figure out how to do this without going outside in the cold. And, and come back and show you when it's all painted. My ink storage is finally painted. I had to wait quite a while to get it to be warm enough to do it. <clears throat> excuse me, outside. Um, I just used some spray paint. <coughs> oh, which is still a little fumey. So it's kind of bothering me. Um, I obviously did not get, you know, in here the best. But I'm okay with it because I figure mostly the inks will be covering that up. But I did want to cover this, um, <coughs> oh, the top and the sides. And so I have this beautiful removable vinyl from Cricut that I thought I would cut a piece to just cover the top and have it hang down the sides a little bit and then overlap on the sides. So I'm just going to cut it all the way across. <clears throat> Just mark where this is going to need to be trimmed. Uh, it's kind of hard because I have the little sections are hanging out a little bit. So I can't decide if I want to just go to the edge of the chipboard. I think I'll have it hang over the whole way. So I'm just gonna scoot it over. See what width I need. Just get that little snip. I can move this guy out of the way. Let's see. Dandy dandy guides.
going to use the back of this to determine my width. overlap a bit. So I think I need it to be that. Oh, that looks pretty good. And I'll be okay with just a little bit of a seam right there. That will be all right. So I'll just use this backing piece to do this side. Make sure they're the same. Yep. Okay. Go line it with the side rather than the bottom because I think this bottom is a little off. Side is definitely not squared up. Okay. Now, just all no longer looking like a bunch of old cereal boxes. So, I went on to the Ranger website and they have this um, Distress Oxide color chart. So, you know, if you want to stamp a little something on it then you know you can have your sample you can see what color it is um, i wanted to arrange the inks in the storage according to this chart so um i think maybe what i'll do is either no i won't be able to write in there i was thinking maybe i could just write it but i think maybe once i have them arranged i will cut cut this out and then like tape it onto here so that when I take them out I can know where they belong. So um, I'm going to get my inks out and get them sorted according to this chart and put away and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. What I decided to do was just write the names on the shelves. They look like, you know, a six-year-old drew them, but that's okay. Um, I just needed to have a way to know where to put the inks. So um, I had them all put away and was going to show you, and then I decided I would write all the names on them first. So I have them all stacked up in the right order. And so I'll just need to slip them in and then I'll show you where I'm going to store them and all that stuff. So I'm going to put them away and show you in a second. Here it is all done on my desk. So there's one side and then the other side. So I can just flip it around to get which side I want. They are, you know, they do stick out. So it's pretty easy to grab. You know, the bottom ones are a little bit harder because you can't really get underneath, but I might put like some feet on the bottom or something and make it stand up. Um, like I say, I just, I just wrote the name of the ink on the shelf and there's room underneath. I think what I'm going to do is put the, I have a dedicated um, felt pad for each color. Right now I have them in these bags and I have um, just swiped the pad and sprayed it so I can see what it looks like. Um, but I think I'll stick the pads on the bottom of the inks um, and then maybe I have punched holes so I think maybe I'll just like maybe put some hooks on the side and just hang these cards on the side so if I want to see what it looks like. I do have um, on the labels the color. So they used to have like a colored um, chart of the inks when they first came out and then they stopped doing it. So I just I took that um, 
chart that I showed you before and then just again swiped swiped the color on it and then I've just used packing tape to tape these on um, so it's you know it's kind of heavy but with the chipboard in between the rows and the chipboard on the top and sides and bottom it's pretty sturdy you know I don't think it's gonna come apart or you know sag or whatever so I am super happy with how that turned out. This is going to make finding my inks so much easier and I'll probably use them more often, which is great. So um, I think that about does it. I'm super excited to have something organized. So thanks so much for watching.